So by friction, we mean uh, anything that's uh, a feature on the environment that is making your customers less likely to make you compete very hard against uh, a competitor. So it's anything that's making, that, that causes your, your customers to find it harder to find a second source. Uh, so there are many reasons why this may happen. It can be because they have an established relationship with you. It may be because it's hard to find someone else. It can be costly. Uh, maybe it's not worth for them to, to look for a second source. So think, for instance, of the, the book uh, retailing business before the internet. Uh, there was quite a lot of friction because when you and I were going to, uh, to a bookstore, it was hard to find an alternative. You'd have to drive to find a different bookstore. But now with the internet, you know exactly who's selling what. Uh, it's very easy to find a, a second uh, provider for, for, the, for the book you want to buy, or even a different book from, from what you wanted to buy. Uh, and then there are situations where uh, actually there's quite a lot of friction. Think of any new product. Uh, when if you're a firm and you're trying to buy a new software for your company, you're very reluctant to, uh, to you want to do that piece of business with someone you trust, with someone who knows you. If it's very important for you, you don't want them to screw that up. So that would make you less likely to, to shop around to many different uh, providers. So all these are examples of frictions uh, that are, I th we think, in this paper, quite important for competition. Uh, so, uh, so this paper was uh, written in collaboration with Peter Zemsky of INSEAD. And I guess the, the idea emerged when we, we wanted to use uh, theoretical tools, like mathematical tools, such as game theory, to address fundamental questions in strategy. And we wanted to find a way to be able to really speak about competition in a way that would be able to tie together different aspects of the theories that we have in strategy and put that in one model and be able to talk about the interaction between all these elements. So frictions were the one way for us to try to tie together ideas that are coming from, for instance, uh, Michael Porter and the Five Forces about the environment and how competitive forces are affecting firm profitability on the one hand. And in the, the other hand, uh, it was, we could use that to think about how firms develop their capabilities. So the idea of frictions was really coming from, let's try to take a feature from the re reality and put that into a mathematical model so that we can really think deeply about how different aspects of competition matter for managers. So let me talk about uh, two different situations in which these ideas can help think about w what to do. Uh, look at the current uh, situation in the economy. Uh, presumably, customers are suddenly shopping around much more. Uh, now the question for as a manager is to understand whether this is a threat of an opportunity. Uh, so what we, we argue, I think, in this paper is that if you try to think in terms of the, the current level of friction in your market, and maybe this level of friction is going down, uh, it can help you understand whether it's a good or a bad thing for you. So it may be a bad thing for you if frictions are quite low, and it means that customers are even more likely to put you directly into competition against uh, other suppliers, in which case you're not losing, sorry, you're not gaining much. Uh, but it can be good for you because maybe actually you will have a whole lot of new potential uh, buyers who would come to you before they did not bother looking around because they were satisfied with what they had. Now that they are less satisfied, they are actually uh, seeking to, to have new suppliers. And this represents an opportunity. So that would be one scenario where thinking in terms of frictions can be useful. Another one that, that's a bit different is when if you're uh, one firm in, in a market and you suppose that you're the you have a weaker firm. There's, there's another firm that's much better than you are. And suddenly there's an innovation that's coming up that maybe allows you to, to invest and to leapfrog and to, to, to suddenly be become the better firm in the market. So here there's a complicated game and interaction that may happen. And what we show in, in, in the paper is that you, you have to understand 
uh, to what extent the gap between your current uh, abilities or current capabilities and your competitors is. Because if this gap is not too, 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 too large, then it may be possible for you actually to, to leapfrog that, that competitor and become a better firm in the market. Uh, but if this gap is very far away, so what we show in the paper is that sometimes it's just not even worth trying. Should improve a bit, but not that much. So thinking in terms of frictions and their interaction with technology is also a way to, 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 to think about whether you want to, to challenge an incumbent. Uh, because there are cases where it's possible. It's not sure you can make it, but it's possible. And there are other cases where we say that it, the analysis suggests more that it's not worth really trying. So in this paper, what we are able to do, and these are also things that we discovered for ourselves, is that we are able to, to understand a bit better the, uh, uh, the relationship and between different concepts that we have in strategy. So I think most uh, MBAs, they learn about the five forces of Michael Porter, which are very, very important framework in strategy. This is something that we teach to all our students. And in this framework, for instance, we have several forces. We have like barriers to entry, rivalry, uh, powers of buyers, powers of suppliers, uh, and whether there are uh, substitutes. Uh, the thing is that it's a great framework to, for instance, to understand how, how to analyze the environment and organize the information. But as such, it doesn't tell us much about how these different forces are interrelated. But in this paper, we are able to understand much better how some of these elements are interacting with each other. And we are finding things that are a bit counterintuitive, but we actually discovered doing this paper that we felt we, we did not know before. So for instance, you have, uh, I mean, counterintuitively, uh, businesses want to have a, a certain level of friction. Even if you're a very good firm, you're better off having some friction in the market. And the reason is that uh, if you start with a small level of friction, it's always better to reduce competition, even though it is at the, at the cost of losing a few, a few customers. But this also means that there's an optimal level of friction, uh, which is something that was not clear to us when we started this paper. So as a manager, you want to monitor the friction that's in the market, and maybe sometime it can, if it goes up, it can be good for you, but sometimes it can be bad. Mm -hmm.